Love is reaching for the lost and for the lame. Love is reaching for the grieving and the shamed. Stretched across all time and story, calling us to come. All the burdened and the broken find their healing in the song. Shalom. This is Sally Klein O'Connor, and you are watching Love Stories. And today I have a very special guest, uh, Aisha Oyarkwa, um, who's from originally from Nigeria. And um, she's going to be sharing a little bit about her life with us and, and her journey. And um, while we were driving down here, uh, one of the scriptures that has meant a lot to her in her in, especially in the early part of her journey, um, comes out of uh, Genesis 50. And uh, it's a story of Joseph, and it's toward the end of that story. And I'm going to just take it from verse 19 and share, if that's okay with you. Sure. Yeah. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. He's speaking to his brothers, um, who are afraid now that they know who he really is, and feeling their guilt for what they did to Joseph, putting him in the pit, selling him to the slave traders so many years ago now. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid, for am I in the place of God? Yes, you yourselves planned evil against me. God planned it for good in order to bring about what it is this day, to preserve the lives of many people, so now don't be afraid. I myself will provide food for you and your little ones. So he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. And, and often that scripture is, is, is spoken or, or translated as, you know, what God meant for evil, or what not what God meant for evil, what you meant for evil, God turned it around for the good. Um, isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, and I do identify with a lot of uh, different parts of Joseph's story, and and that verse really gives me perspective in life, uh, just in not focusing too much on the bad, and just seeing that whatever God allows in your life, which may not always be pretty or happy or good, um, the way we define good, but that God is also able to work it all out, you know, in a way that it's good for you, and even use that. To help other people and, and that's kind of what I believe that the love the Lord has done with my life in using all of my uh, my journey my struggles my pain my suffering and um, uh, turning it around for good even though it was not intended for good so yeah he is all about redemption he's yeah. always about redemption yeah so even and you know we, we often say this line of scripture I believe it's from Romans 8 that he causes all things to work together for the good for them that love him and are called according to his purpose. That's true. He you causes know? all things, but not that all things are good. <laughs> no, no. And I, yes. think, I think of that, you know, I mean, I think of that as, as even evil things, you know. That's and true. that's what Joseph is saying to them. That's true. That, yeah. you know, you intended evil, evil, but God knew, you know, and he was going to use it for the good. That's right. Yeah, you know? that's true. That's a powerful perspective to have on a, on your life. Yeah, I you know to continue yeah. to have. You uh, you were born in Nigeria. What part of Nigeria? Well, it's the south. We call it the, the southern part of Nigeria. South south. Uh, it's uh, uh, the state is a dual state, and the city is Benin city. Uh, culturally, we have a very rich heritage. Culturally, the Benins uh, were known for they were sculptors. We still have a hmm. lot of. Uh, sculptures from like over uh, hundreds of years ago in the UK and different places but it, we have a very rich cultural heritage so I was born in Benin City and uh, grew up in Nigeria and you know was raised in Nigeria uh, both of my parents are from this the same state but different tribes so uh, Nigeria has over 500 different tribes and you know each tribe has their own culture and values so we're very very diverse in that way 
And you, you were, you were saying as we were driving, <laughs> um, that there was a lot of harmony, uh, at the time you were growing up, there was a lot of harmony between all the tribes. Yes. I mean, we are very diverse. Also, uh, Nigeria is about 50-50 Christians and Muslims. Right. And we have always coexisted up until recently. Um, I mean, we were used to having, you know, the, we, we, I grew up in a Muslim family because my dad was Muslim, but people across the street are Christians, even in class. So we always kind of coexisted like that. We have uh, both Christian and Muslim holidays, national holidays in my country, uh, up until, you know, pretty recently, which I think a lot of the... Just a lot of the killings and a lot of the things that we see happening now, you know, I think there's a little bit of politics in there as well. But um, but but sadly, it's it's not. There are some parts of the country that, you know, um, they don't want Christians there anymore. So that's really sad uh, because we've we've always uh, coexisted peacefully uh, for the most part. So there is a persecution of Christians. There's going a lot on of persecution going on in the hmm. northern part of the country, which is predominantly Muslims, and um, so that's that's kind of sad. So you were you were also saying that you know when you were about three years old, your parents separated uh, from each other, and your like you said, your mom was from one tribe, your father was from another. Your mom and dad came together. He being a Muslim but uh, she not really being anywhere and then discovering coming to faith um, during the time of their marriage. Yes. Uh, so my, <clears throat> my dad uh, was Muslim <clears throat> and my mom didn't really have any religion at the time. So my dad, uh, uh, and it's pretty common for Muslims to marry more than one wife. So my dad already at the time had two other wives. So my mom married my dad as his third wife. Uh, so also polygamy is legal in, in Nigeria as well. Uh, but my dad's a Muslim and I think they are allowed to marry up to four wives and he did marry up to four wives. Uh, so, but my mom wasn't a Christian at the time, uh, but my parents uh, they separated when I was three and my sister, I have a younger sister who was one at the time. And we lived primarily with my mom and we visit my dad, maybe on Muslim holidays. Uh, but uh, the system in Nigeria was just a yeah, legal system. There was no way. My mom was from a really poor family and my dad had money, uh, but he wouldn't pay for education. Yeah. So uh, so we, so I, we, my mom really struggled to put us through school, uh, public school, which there's a huge disparity between public and private school because of so much corruption uh, that has really eaten deep into the fabrics of the society. Uh, the public schools are run down and you don't get that quality education and it does affect when you, where you actually end up in life. So my mom wanted us to get a good education, but also legally there were not systems in place to get child support or anything like that. So it ended up being um, my mom eventually when I was nine and my sister was seven, she just had to let us go live with my dad because that was his condition that if, if he was going to pay for our education, we have to come live in his house with his other wives and his other ki kids, which my mom didn't want. Uh, but eventually she just, she felt like he, and she would tell, you know, you know, we needed the education. And she would say, you know, that education is going to change your life. And, you know, and I see today, I see what she meant because it did change my life in some ways. I, I mean, I'm sitting down with you now yeah, because yeah. I had that education. So we went to live with my dad and his two wives. And at the time there were 14 kids, uh, 14 kids. Other kids at the house, most of which of them were older than us. And um, yeah. Were you all crammed into bedrooms together in group bedrooms? or? Well, we have a, a really big house, a okay. uh, mansion kind of, uh, but it's still a lot of kids. So everybody didn't have their own room, but it was, it was a pretty big house. And so, yeah, it was a big house and we had all that. We always had more kids in the house because they were friends and relatives. So it was always a very busy <laughs> busy household uh, but uh, we yeah so my sister and I ended up going there and um, it was the hard hard time of our lives but you know we needed to get the education that was that was uh, the goal of going there and thank god we did get the education even though it came at a um, at a pretty high price you, know. you say it was a hard time in your 
life, what, what kind of stuck out to you in, in general about the difficulty there? I mean, you went from your mom, who you were very close to. Yes. And at that point, when she let you guys go, I assume she was probably a Christian at that point. She wasn't at that point, actually. Oh, she wasn't um, yet. It was, okay. uh, I, I think that was when she started searching and really wanting to... <clears throat> So when she let us go live with, with, with my dad, um, you know, I think when I say it was a hard time, it was, so you have to remember there are two other wives in this house um, right? who really didn't like my mom and then we're coming back now to live, which wasn't really their idea. It was my dad's idea for us to come back. So, you know, and my dad was not always around. So we were placed with one of the wives who had six, eight kids of her own. So there was, we didn't really have any space there. She didn't want us, but she had to do what my dad wanted to do. And, you know, so we were never fully accepted, you know, as equals in that house. We were treated less than. We were not, you know, fully um I mean, we were just, yeah, we were always relegated to the brand. And there, were, there was just a lot of maltreatment, you know, that went on in, during all of that time and period. And we just, you know, a lot of times we just felt lost. But, you know, we, my mom kept just saying, you need to get that education. And we just, you know, tried our best to focus on that education. And thank God we did get that education. But again, um, we, we, we left with a lot of scars. <laughs> emotionally yeah. um but that, that had to be hard you know i mean being in a, a household where it's almost cinderella like it's like i favor my kids over you know and, yeah and, I mean, and you you talked about you know that the wives were competitive with each other I, and I dickering mean, and we we are we came into the scenario where there was already tension rivalry in the house so we couldn't you fit in anywhere yeah. uh you were too close to this it was a problem through close to this side, and I feel like in some, in some ways, we felt like pawns in the middle of just not knowing what to do, not really fully walking on eggshells most of the time because you don't want to annoy, you know, people of just you know just not really really again not being seen as. Uh, basically been seen as second class citizens in, in that house, not feeling like you know we had a, a stick there kind of and my dad was not he was very busy and he wasn't always around and even when he was around uh we didn't have that much emotional physical access to him because it was a big house but he had his own apartment in our house by himself uh so you he wasn't aware of a lot of things that went on in the house because he was always uh not around initially initially you know, I would report some things, but, you know, it just made it worse. And I just, yeah. you know, had to make the decision to just, you know, you need to suck it up and just um, put your eye on the price, which is to get the education and, and to get out of there. And that's exactly what I did. It's a very, I mean, you know, just listening to you tell it, you know, as we were driving and then also here, you know, it's such a, um, a foreign thing, but to me, you know, because it's like, oh, okay, you know, my parents were together for 30 years and then they split up, but it was never like that, you know, and maybe my father favored the son, you know, but he loved us, you know, as much as he could, you know, um, so it's very, it's a very interesting thing, but it's also like, it's in, as I think about it, it's also in the Hebrew scriptures, you know, Abraham had, what, he had Sarah, <clears throat> and then he had Hagar and 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 then later on even had uh, another wife yeah. and and so it goes uh, you know the sons of Jacob had you know wives you know so it's 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 interesting dynamic to realize that that creates this kind of conflict it's yeah. not what it started out to be I mean in ver in the garden it's very simple you know it's like he gives Eve to Adam as a as a helpmeet. Yeah. You know, he doesn't give a team of women to Adam <laughs> as yeah. a help me. He gives Eve to Adam and, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it does. It always, it wasn't how it was supposed to be, in my opinion. And um, it's not sister wives, you know, like you see on TV and everything's not all nice. And <laughs> there's a lot more than that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, from what you're saying, I can I can really imagine. So your your mom came to the Lord in that time, you know, she was seeking, you know, 
And she was a tremendous influence, right? Oh, yeah. So we went over to my dad's, and then uh, my mom eventually became a Christian, and she started praying for us, or even unknown to me. And a few years later, they started, again, we were Muslim. My, my dad was not fanatical, but we, don't, we didn't really go to church. Uh, my dad was a well-known Muslim, but he wasn't also forcing us. Occasionally, he will, you know, maybe for the Muslim um, celebration of festivals, he'll ask us to come with him to, to mosque uh, right. for ceremony and prayers, mm -hmm. but we were not uh, forced to become, to take up his religion. But we identified as Muslims, as, as kids growing up. But years later, my mom became a Christian, and then she said, this is a story she eventually told us. She started praying, just really started praying seriously for us to become saved. And then they started a church just two houses from our Ooh. house. And that's how we started. That's how we started going to church. And just started, you know, that's kind of how we started. You know, we just started going to church, attending all the programs, went for midweek services and all of that. That really opened the door. Yes, mm -hmm. my mom was a huge influence in my life because uh, she became a Christian, and it's like my mom has always been a very passionate, very zealous person, and that which, just... which you're not passionate or <laughs> zealous at all. <laughs> you know. I am my mother's child. What can I say? <laughs> um, but she just really, really, I mean, uh, it, it felt like she was became a Christian today, and the next day she was fully deep in ministry. I mean, all of her family members got saved. Uh, she you could see, I could see that, I mean, it was in my mom's life that I experienced just the power of God, the presence of God. I mean, she spoke about the Lord with so much conviction. She had so much spiritual power, just, you know, really believing the scriptures. And she was a woman of the word. She was a woman of prayer. I mean, she wanted to see other people saved and uh, she just had such a heart. So she really discipled my sister and I, uh, me especially, you know, in just teaching me how to pray, how to hear from the Lord, how to study the word and just, uh, you know, how to uh, be about my father's business and just, you know, saying that, it, you, you know, God saves us so also we can be a light to save other people. So she was always doing stuff like that in the community. She was well known in her community, pointing people to God, going to pray for people, doing all kinds of things. So. So she, it's kind of a nuclear. It was. I'm telling you, yeah. So she was. She was. I mean, I. I initially, even when I got saved, it took me a while. I accepted Jesus as savior, but I didn't really fully comprehend what it meant for Jesus to be the Lord of my life for I would say for another uh, four to five years. But it was when I, you know, started really experiencing the way she, her relationship with the Lord. It was so real. I mean, she spoke about Jesus with so much passion. It felt like, you know, Jesus was right there in her bedroom. If she, you know, every, you know, so she just had such an intimate relationship with the Lord that I, I wanted, you know. So, so I started getting close, and she started showing me, and started teaching me, and and started discipling me eventually. And she became pastor, mom, prayer partner, everything in one. Yeah, she, she just really, she, the life that I have with the Lord today, she, she, I mean, I owe a lot of it to her. That's beautiful. I mean, that's, that's really beautiful. Um, so you, you know, your encounter with God, was there a, was there a particular moment that just like opened your eyes or it was just, just in the incredible example of your mom that you decided to, you know, follow that example, which then led into a deeper place with you and the Lord. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> my growing, growing up in, you know, going over to my dad's house and just experiencing a lot of uh, injustice, even though, you know, my mom's family was poor, but we were happy. Right. And, you know, we didn't even know we were poor, you know. <laughs> so, but going over to my dad and experiencing uh, a lot of maltreatment and injustice and just pain and, and feeling uh, like an outsider, like an outcast and not uh, be even though our standard of living was better. It was a nicer house, nicer neighborhood. We had way more resources than we, you know, than we did when we were, when we lived with my mom. But uh, deep down, I think, you know, the, 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 you know, people want to be loved. People want to feel valued. People want to feel accepted. And that was lacking for my life. So I had that longing for something more always had that and uh, you know gradually little by little so I mean I just you know I know that I heard the gospel for the first time maybe through the Jehovah's Witnesses and the idea of heaven was 
okay, well, I definitely don't want to go to hell. So that was kind of the initial thing. And then went to church with a few friends and heard more about Jesus and more and more and wanted to be a Christian, but I still didn't know what a life of faith looked like. Right. Yeah. So it was in my mother. I knew about God. I, you know, eventually accepted God, but, um, studying my mom's life and really seeing what this is the life that the Bible described. You know, up until that time, I hadn't really seen it played out like that, you know, of how you grow, how you trust the Lord, how you live the life that God has called you to do, and how you walk in power and authority that the scripture talks about. And you saw the contrast in somebody so close to you and somebody that you Someone were very I know. close. You were like, you know, this was that, and this is now. This, now, is, this now. is now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And there was... A yes. marked difference. It was could, like night or, and day, you know. Yeah. And and my mom had her own struggles uh, herself, but I saw her rise above circumstances and right. situations, and just you know, live the life that I believe that God had called her to live, and just impact people's lives, and you know, walk with the Lord in in a way that was uh, truly remarkable. That's that's very cool. I, you know, my life is a little different, you know, obviously in many ways, but, you know, um, I, you know, your mom being an example to you, you know, is kind of like, you know, my father had to see it in me, you know, it was, it was interesting. Your, your father and you uh, had a, a reasonable relationship in an unreasonable situation. <laughs> Um, considering, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I love my dad and we've always had a good relationship. Um, but again, just because of the circumstances of, uh, you know, growing up, um, I mean, there were so many wives and so many kids, so you only have that much attention uh, for each child. And he was busy and traveled a lot. So, but we always had a good relationship. But initially, you know, I just, I had a lot of things I was wanting from him. Uh, that frankly he didn't have it to give, you know. So I I think at some point I, I I becoming a Christian and just getting to know God as my heavenly Father, that helped me to lean towards God uh, more as a fatherly figure. And even though I still had a good relationship with my dad, my dad was focused on okay, I want to get my job is to get you an education. And he was very passionate about education. So all all of his nineteen kids. Uh, all graduated college, and that's what he felt was his responsibility. Uh, being there emotionally and physically and stuff, he wasn't really um, there a lot of the times uh, because, again, he was that busy. So, and and you know, so I had those needs of you know wanting a father who was more present in my life and being part of my life and understood. But I had realized that he didn't have that to give, and you know, and I just had to. Uh, instead of being upset and wanting more, just um, just to accept that this is what I can get from him and to take that. Yeah, you were talking about that. I, I wanted to ask you, did your father have a reaction to you becoming a Christian? No, again, my father married some women who were not who were Christians, you know, wow. one of his wives was Catholic. So again, he was very... My dad was very, he was Muslim. He would tell you, he always said, you know, I was raised Muslim, I'm going to die Muslim, and he did. But his best friend was Christian. So he was very, my dad was very, very... Um, his best friend was a Christian. Yeah, wow. yeah. Yeah, he was a Christian. He was not a Muslim. So he's he was very well-traveled, and he was very... Uh, great with people so he was very accepting of people of different religions so so he then again he didn't force us to take on uh, his religion he recommended it um, and when we became adults and went up you know doing our own thing so no so I didn't I mean I have cousins who experienced that uh, from their dad but my dad you know wanted us to getting an education was his priority um, yeah and that's what he felt he owed us I think I think um, you talk, you saying about your father, especially that he gave what he could give, you know, and the realization that, you know, the things you wanted from him, he didn't have to give, you know, um, probably enabled you to, in, in some way, forgive him for those things that he couldn't give, that you wanted, that you sought after, but he didn't know how to give. That's true. 
That's true. I, I think that was freeing for me when, when I got to that point and then this took um, my becoming a Christian and seeking the Lord and, you know, just coming, seeing him also and the, looking at the great things he's done, you know, in my life and, and in the lives of um, his family and seeing that this part, this is something that he doesn't have. You know, he grew up in similar circumstances. He doesn't have that. Uh, emotional issues are not overemphasized in our culture, you know, you have food to eat, you have a place to sleep, you know, this is what I can do. do. Yeah. So this is what I can do. And just accepting that, and uh, uh, that, you know, I, you can't expect from someone what he doesn't have to give. Well, but you know, you can't, ex from your point of view, you can't expect from someone that, what they don't have to give, but that doesn't mean that people don't do that. Or children don't do that with their parents. Yes. And there is a lot of that. I expected I that. I expected that. But I lived in this appointment uh, for years and years yeah. until I realized I don't want to live this way. And I don't see anything changing. The only thing that a person that's going to change is me. Uh, because this is who he is. Uh, and that was who he was until he died. So, I, But right. I wanted to change. I didn't I wanted to take what I could get and make the best of it instead of... Um, focusing on what I cannot get or could not get. That's a really excellent ad ad <laughs> attitude. <laughs> yeah. And I, I really appreciate that you, in you, you know, Aisha. Um, well, we are, we are coming close to time. I wonder if maybe you could, uh, I don't know, m maybe lead us in a prayer. For, for people who grow up in those kind of households, not, not specifically yours, because there isn't a lot of that. I mean, there's probably some of that, but there's not a lot of that. But I mean, just the disappointment or the unfulfilled expectations, instead of the willingness to see the person, as, as you've said, being able to see the person, and that's all they had. Those are all the gifts that they didn't have it. It wasn't given to them, maybe, and they don't have it to give, and they don't know how to find it to give. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of, in my opinion, a mercy, you yeah. know. So maybe would you lead us oh, in sure. a little prayer there? Sure. Yeah, sure. For those people. Yeah, Lord, I just want to thank you for anybody who's watching right now who will see this video later. Uh, that you would, Lord, we live in a broken world and um, since Adam and Eve sin, everything has been broken and we are broken people. Um, so, Lord, I just want to pray if there's someone uh, growing up in a, in a family that was not perfect, not normal, experiencing a lot of hurt and pain in different ways or other circumstances and situations, Lord, I want to pray that you give them hope, oh God, that mm -hmm. you are able to make bring good even out of the worst case scenario Thank you, God. lord i pray that you use oh god all of that pain because that's what you do you bring beauty out of ashes Thank you god. use all the broken pieces of my life that's what you're using in my life today to reach other people lord i pray oh god that those uh disappointments oh god those uh you know unfulfilled expectations will draw them closer to you and not away from you because you're the one who keeps every single promise you do not break a promise lord Thank you you, you satisfy you fill us with yourself and that's all that we need lord i just want to thank you i pray oh god for healing as well in jesus name amen Amen. And uh, you've been watching Love Stories. This is Sally Klein O'Connor. Thank you. And until next time, shalom. <laughs>